GoFundMe by clicking the link on our website, WKBW.com, and with support from other students and teachers at their school, Roy B. Kelly Elementary in Lockport, the girls say after making over 150 bracelets in just two days, they've already donated nearly $300, and they tell me it's not just the bracelet you'll get after placing an order. We actually pray for some of the bracelets, so whoever like receives get like a blessing. And so too, the newfound community backing Kenny and his family as they navigate this battle with cancer. Kenny says his heart is already so full. Thank you and God bless you all. And I'm thinking about you guys and yeah. In Lockport, I'm Sydney York, 7 News. So sweet. If you needed a smile on the Sunday night, there it is, Sydney. Thank you so much. Now we'll take you to a picture perfect day to look out for your own health and happiness. Project Best Life by Roswell Park hosting a happy and healthy wellness day at Buffalo's Delaware Park this afternoon. People gathering at the terrace taking part in things like spin classes and yoga. Several local businesses and organizations also on hand providing information and services to help you live your best life. The decisions that you make today uh, have a long lasting impact, you know, throughout your life. Um, so obviously at Roswell Park, we're concerned about cancer, but it's not just cancer. It's a ton of different um, diseases and, il and il illnesses that, um, you know, your diet, your, your amount of um, physical activity and also your stress levels and mental health can really have an impact on, on all these things. So, um, you know, just trying to really get people to think about their health uh, while they're young. Project Best Life was established in 2019 as a way to empower people to take control of their lives and take tangible steps to be their healthiest and happiest selves. And now to the Salvatore's Hospitality Ballroom in Depew, Sweet Buffalo Rocks and Totally Buffalo Cares coming together to host a special afternoon called Be Our Guest. Look how cute this is. This magical event is for each prince and princess battling cancer or other life-threatening illnesses. It also gives families an opportunity to remember and honor the lives of children who have gone too soon. It all began with a lunch and then a photo booth and dessert bar, a chance to show off some moves on the dance floor. And we caught up with Kelly Barnhart and her son. She says their journey has not been easy, but the joy they feel today makes it all worth it. This is my son Carson. When he was five months old, he was diagnosed with a really aggressive form of brain cancer. Um, so he had surgery right away and a year of chemotherapy. Thankfully, we're almost five years from from that, so we like to celebrate him any chance we get because he is an incredible warrior. Did you dance to some of your favorite songs? Yeah. A journey like this is something that is challenging. That no one can really understand unless they're on it. And to gather together and really just see joy on all of the faces, the families, the kids, it's just so special to bring something so positive to a journey that's really challenging and difficult. Yeah, so great to see them enjoying that magic. More than 100 kids who have faced medical hardships attended today's magical event. All right, up next at 11, a pair of familiar faces from the Buffalo Bills, both past and present, hosting different events to help people in the future. Plus, a spectacular day for the final round of the PGA Championship just down the throughway in Rochester. We're going to have a recap and hear from the winner when 7 News continues. You are watching 7 News with Taylor Epps, 7 weather meteorologist Josh Nichols, and sports with Dom Tibbetts. Welcome back, everybody. It might be too soon to head over to summer camp, but it's never too soon to roll up your sleeves and show that you care. Mike Randall headed out to Cradle Beach Camp in Angola earlier this week to catch some students in action. The buses arrived early, but not with campers. This is the cleanup crew. Kids, honestly, really have never done landscaping before or scraped a building, so um, they're going to be learning a new skill today. Principal Jolene Dimitrov helped organize this day of caring. Yeah, we're going towards this big green. Their main cabin is the big green one over there. She came with lots of cleaning supplies and a crew of 120 students from Cardinal O'Hara and Niagara University. So we're here to, to have some fun, but to also help Cradle Beach open up for their uh, summer camp season. This is no ordinary camp. Welcome. Welcome to Cradle Beach. Nancy Grimes was first introduced to Cradle Beach 15 years ago and got hooked. The magic of all people are welcome here. There is no, there is no barriers. 
we include everyone. Now she's the administrative director, programs and operations. Go down this walkway, past the treehouse. She got the crews moving. After all, there was a beach to clean up, cabins to sweep, windows to wash, and oh yeah, lots of old paint to be scraped. One lucky crew got to work in this wonderful treehouse. It's it's really nice. I really like it. I feel like my inner child is coming out, being in the treehouse. Fun and beautiful. It's in a beautiful spot. The students also brought some fun equipment for this year's campers. Cradle Beach Camp is a nonprofit organization. They are open 365 days a year, and they're always looking for donations, volunteers, and campers. And according to Nancy, these students' efforts make a big difference. So it's wonderful. It could not be better to have that kind of response from a group of kids that are part of that next generation of leaders. As part of their lesson in caring, the students are leaving post-it notes with positive messages for the campers arriving this season. This one. It's cute. Sunshine always follows the rain, so never give up. I think you can say, lesson learned. Mike Randall, 7 News, Angola. Sounds like fun, Mike. Thank you so much. Well, now to an event designed to inspire hope for the future. More than a year after the top shooting that claimed the lives of 10 people, the annual, second annual Bruce Smith Celebrity Gala taking place tonight at Stolat Bar in the Eastern Hills Mall. People are getting the chance to mingle with the likes of Bruce Smith, Steve Tasker, and some other Bills alumni. It's all designed to raise money for the Aaron Salter Memorial Scholarship Fund. Salter is a retired Buffalo police officer who lost his life trying to save others as a security guard on that terrible day last May. It's a fundraiser just so we can, you know, provide the scholarships and, you know, keep the legacy going, keep his legacy alive, but create some positivity and, you know, have a better community engagement and a way that we can kind of bring some positivity and bring everybody together in such a sad, you know, time and remembrance. The fun doesn't stop with tonight's party, the second annual Bruce Smith Celebrity Golf Tournament taking place tomorrow at the Lockport Town and Country Club, starting at 10 a.m. Now to some fun in the sun at Woodlawn Beach. Dozens came out for some friendly competition for a good cause, hosted by a familiar face. Teams competed in the Dion Dawson's Charity Cornhole Tournament this afternoon, put on with the help from the Buffalo Cornhole League. They had food, drinks, a raffle, and silent auction. Some of his teammates got in on the fun. And of course, we know Dawkins from his skills protecting Josh Allen on the football field. But Cornhole, more than just fun for him. I kind of have like, like this weird dream of being a professional like Cornhole player. If I had more time to, to focus on this career, I mean, I would be elite. But, you know, football comes and comes first, so. I think just when you think things are going down, there's people like Deion Dawkins, the Bills, the Mafia, that come up and bring these happy times and show kids, you know, it doesn't matter how old, no matter where you came from, no matter what you're doing, you still have a dream, do it. Yeah, and that's what today was really all about, helping kids achieve their dreams. All proceeds from the event go to Dion's Dreamers, which helps mentor young men and women in underserved communities. Well, it's the perfect day out there to get out in the sand and play some cornhole. We'll check in now with meteorologist Josh Nichols, tracking your seven weather forecast. Hey, Josh. Hey there, Taylor, and good evening, everyone. Yeah, for sure, whatever it is, get outside over the next few days because you have some very nice weather to look forward to here across all of western New York from hilltop to lakeshore. The sunshine may look a little fuzzy at times, that's not haze, by the way, that is smoke from distant wildfires in Canada. They've been uh, quite expansive in coverage, and that smoke has made its way with the jet stream down into western New York. But we'll be back into the upper 60s tomorrow. There is a map of that uh, wildfire smoke again coming from Edmonton and uh, Calgary and Alberta. And again, with those northwesterly winds aloft, some of that smoke making its way all the way across Lake Ontario, Lake Erie and western New York. Let's take a sneak peek at the holiday weekend. It's right around the corner. Looks good so far as I can tell. There could be an isolated shower on Memorial Day, but temperatures easy to take. The next opportunity for any showers, if you are a landscaper, a farmer, a gardener, just want to get those flowers watered maybe without uh, your aid, looks like it would be later Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night. Then much cooler air follows in the wake of that front on Thursday. And we'll see some clouds around Thursday afternoon and Friday. But really, again, nothing that should impact your plans, I don't think, in a big way. 
but only a tenth of an inch of rain out of that feature means you will need to have that watering can handy. Right now, partly cloudy, 56 degrees, a little bit of a southwesterly breeze coming in. We're at 58 in Dunkirk right now, 55 in the falls. And again, looking back to the west, no cloud cover. It's just that uh, thin smoke layer aloft. So it'll make for a nice sunrise when you wake up tomorrow morning, that is for sure. So the call again for tonight, just a few patchy clouds. It's seasonable. Temperatures will be dropping back into the middle and upper 40s. So when you wake up tomorrow morning for that morning drive or to head to the bus stop, definitely grab a light jacket, but you should be able to shed it in the afternoon. Note the breezes here coming in out of the northeast off of Lake Ontario. That's going to keep you cooler in Albion. You're at 59 for a high. Head inland to Niagara Falls. You're at 65 for top temp, 64 Lancaster, 66 in West Seneca, and down into the western and central southern tier. You're one of the warmer spots. Jamestown, you reach 70 degrees. Have a check of that Super 7 Day forecast. Tuesday is the warmest day of the week coming. Lots of sunshine, 78 for a high. Again, scattered showers later Wednesday, 66. We cool down in a big way on Thursday, but with a fair amount of sunshine, and then temperatures moderate very nicely heading into the holiday weekend, so we should be in good shape. And you're watching 7 News at 11. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Dom Tibbetts, Brianna Aldrich here back at the Oak Hill Country Club for the final round of the PGA Championship here in Rochester. And it was just announced that Brooks Kafka is your new winner. And Dom, he started today atop of the leaderboard, and that's pretty much where he stayed. It did get kind of close, though, at times. Well, so you're going down the last couple holes. Victor Hovland, Scotty Scheffler, kind of giving Kepka a little bit of run for his money. But he shot nine under overall, three under on total for the day. Really paced himself well. And when he got to 18, all he had to do, play his game the right way. And that's exactly what he did. And now he brings home his third PGA championship since 2015. It's, it's crazy. I think I try not to think of it right now. I think, uh, I mean, I do care about it. It's just it's tough to really grasp the situation kind of while you're still in it, I think. I mean, probably when I'm retired and um, you know, I can look back with, with Jenna and, and my son and, and kind of reflect on all that stuff, I think that'll be, that'll be truly special. But I mean, right now I'm just trying to collect as many of these things as I can. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So obviously Brooks Kepka winning the PGA Championship breathed a big takeaway from all this, but I think if you're looking for the fan favorite, the storyline of this weekend, look no further than Michael Block. Block. Block party was the words that was going around a true Cinderella story. Now he's played in 24 PGA events in his career, and he's only made the cut four of those times. Today he qualifies the top 15, but I think the big moment was definitely his hole-in-one. I hit it and it's just right at it, but I can't see it. I'm like, just like, like right now. And all of a sudden it disappears, whatever. And uh, I'm like, cool. And I'm like, thanks guys. And uh, Rory's walking down the pathway and he about 20 yards away from me. And he turns around, starts walking back at me with his arms open to give me a hug. And uh, he goes, you made it. And Dom, it's just a really exciting time to be a Rochester sports fan. A lot going on. Obviously, the PGA is here for the first time in over a decade, but also the Rochester Americans get ready to hit the ice and also qualifying for something they haven't done in over a decade or so. Well, and now they're going to bring on one of the best prospects in the Sabres organization, Matt Savoy, called up this afternoon to come join Rochester as they get ready for the Eastern Conference Finals when they take on the Hershey Bears later this week. He's been killing it up in the WHL so far this season. Season. And even though Bree, he might not play, you maybe won't see an immediate impact from him right now. As they push for a Calder Cup, it's going to be really important to have a guy like Savoy on the team, on the roster, in terms of death. And in case of an injury happens, now you know you have somebody who can come in and step in and fill the role. And last but not least, we have to talk about the Buffalo Bandits, who have been resting for about a week trying to see who they will play, the Calgary or Colorado. And it was decided last night that it will be a rematch, Dom, between the Bandits and the Colorado Mammoths happening this upcoming weekend. Looking forward to that one. So, yeah, Dom, across the board, just an exciting time for sports in Western New York in general. Wrapping up an event, like I had mentioned earlier, that Rochester hasn't had in over 10 years. You can hear the crowd, so we are not making this up. It is an exciting time to be a sports fan here in Western New York. This, it ended like <laughs> minutes ago, probably even close to a half an hour ago. And you know, you're still hearing the roars and it looks like that's <laughs> Brooke Kapko walking over to the uh, scores table to wrap things up here. But it's great to see professional golf back here in Rochester, back here in Western New York. It's an exciting time, like you said, for sports all across the area. And we'll look forward to bringing you all that coming up this week. But for now, joining Brianne Aldridge, I'm Dom Tibbetts from the Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester. And we'll send it back to you.
Well, we have a fine day shaping up here to start out the new week. A little on the cool side of the morning, so definitely grab that jacket as you head out the door for work or school. But by afternoon, you can definitely shed that jacket. Temperatures into the upper 60s. That's that Goldilocks range. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. And I think most of the week will be just fine. So we're in pretty good shape if you have some time off. Not too bad for the introduction of summer, right? That's right. Not too bad. Well, thank you so much for enjoying. Thank you so much for staying up with us. Want to give a big happy birthday to our main man, the quarterback, Josh Allen. 7 News continues right now on Facebook, Twitter, and our WKBW streaming app. Good morning, Buffalo team. Going to be here with you at 430. Good night. So long. After you. So you just tell us what you need and we'll... Uh... This is Mayor Marcus. Stand by. Fire. He brought us to this gun range to show us how he trains people to become armed security guards. One more. The industry of private security has been growing. And while you might see a security guard at the grocery store or at the mall, we wanted to know what qualifications do they have, especially the guards who are armed. So I'll just tell you guys what we're going to do and we'll just go through it one by one. The majority of it is classroom, then you have hands-on courses that cover combatives, handcuffing, pepper spray, baton, and firearms. And you'll actually do those things hands-on as part of your training. Stand by. Fire. Marcus works for Ranger Guard, a private security company based in Houston with roughly 400 security guards in Texas. It also operates in Florida and Nevada. A big part of that comes down to response time. You can't beat the response time of someone that's there on site already. Many of the guards he trains will patrol parking lots, construction sites, and even schools like this private one in Houston. In the past, the way that security guards were perceived was bad. When I think of the word security guard, yeah. I think of the... Mock up. It, yeah. Ranger Guards founder David Catran may be aware of what some people think of security guards, but he says that's changing, especially with property crimes increasing last year in many large cities, according to a report by the national nonprofit, the Council on Criminal Justice. Crimes like car thefts and break-ins are solved only 13% of the time, according to Pew Research. He says businesses are willing to pay him more for someone to stand guard. If we go back, I would say, five years ago, where police would come in, let's say, $45 an hour, and security guard company would come in at around $19 to $20 an hour, today, I can say that we're even. While more businesses may be turning to private security, with many police departments stretched thin, Robert McCree, who teaches at the John Jay School of Criminal Justice in New York and has studied private security since the 70s, tells me it's important to understand the difference between private security and private police. The industry doesn't like that term, private police, because they really aren't police. Private security officers are there to deter, to detect, to respond, but not to put their lives at risk if uh, something untoward is occurring. The qualifications to be a security guard vary from state to state. On the target. Along with the firearms training we saw, in Texas, security guards also need to pass background checks. Every state is different. Um, and so it, it's a state-run industry. Uh, and so it, even, even to the local level sometimes. I spoke with Steve Amate with the National Association of Security Companies. He travels the country in support of states adding training requirements for security guards. There's no national standard, but more cities and states are putting in training requirement laws. He says right now 28 states require specific hours of training for a security guard to carry a gun. This week, Maryland's governor signed a bill that will make his state the 29th next year. A law is now in effect in Tennessee that requires security guards to go through de-escalation training as well as learn CPR and first aid. The law is called Dallas's Law, named after a man who died after being restrained by security guards in Nashville in 2021.